today we'll check water temp and air temp. Um, and it's likely they're going to be on land, given that it's nice and sunny out. Um, but they can also be in the water, so your polarized glasses are perfect for that. This team of biologists is about to go hunting for a prehistoric reptile, the wood turtle. Hopefully most of them will be on land and make it easier on us. Um, and since our vegetation isn't growing up that far, we should be able to see them. And if we can't see them, she'll smell them, hopefully. <laughs> but it never goes to plan. They're armed with a special weapon. This is June, and she's been working all week, so she's, she is a bit tired. Here. Good. Hey, here. All the way. Here. Good. Sit. June, a yellow lab, loves tracking down turtles. Mouse or turtle, huh? I'm going to say mouse. Come on, find turtle. Okay, like any three-year-old, June can get distracted. <laughs> Come on. But her sense of smell is second to none. It's a turtle right here. You got a turtle? Yeah. Nice. It doesn't take long for her to find the turtle. Wood turtles are not endangered, at least not yet, but they are at risk, and people are partially to blame. One of the big problems is a pet trade. People you know, pick up our pets, and also with our development of big trucks of land, the fragmentation of areas, so the, they get hit by cars occasionally too. So. Making matters worse, the turtles are slow to reproduce. They have a very low reproductive rate. They don't reproduce until they're uh, between 15 and 18 years of age and when the female lays only about eight eggs a season, um, and they don't necessarily produce every season. So it's really important to maintain every adult so they can sustain the population. That's why finding these wood turtles here in Aroostook County is exciting news. Carapace length, I got 183.79. I just want to see how many are here and uh, do all we can to you know, protect them. Even more exciting is where the turtles have been found a former military installation that once housed nuclear weapons. This road used to go right up in the weapons storage area there. You can see the gate. Wayne Selfridge was stationed at Loring Air Force Base. That is the very first nuclear weapons storage area in the United States. You're on the very first Air Force Base in the United States. He serves here in a different capacity now as a volunteer. There's a lot of history here and we didn't want to lose a lot of it, but the real historical stuff We've kept. Loring was massive, more than 9,000 acres in size. Very productive wildlife area in here. I had some game cameras set up in here and got all kinds of deer, bear, and moose. Thousands of service members, civilians, and their families shared Loring with the local wildlife from the late 40s until it closed in 1994. Much of the forest here was never altered to help hide the base from enemy observation. It's kind of an oasis. If you look at it down from top, there's a lot of agricultural land around it, so it's kind of an oasis for the, the wildlife with the trees and in the contrast to the agricultural landscape all surrounding it, too. Soon after Loring was decommissioned, more than half of those 9,000 acres were transferred from the Department of Defense to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and transformed into a Roostic National Wildlife Refuge. Believe it or not, some of the Department of Defense sites actually make really good national wildlife refuges because the quality of the habitat had, in some areas have been preserved, you know, since going back to before World War II. Uh, whereas outside of those areas, there might have been development, um, you know, agricultural or commercial or, or residential. The old base continues to surprise with its unique mix of history and habitat. And you know, when the people come here, especially when you get, give tours, so they can understand what's here then and now. They don't just leave in amazement of the, the nuclear power that was once here, but how it can be reused the way it is. Ready? 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 You're going to find it? You're going to find turtles? You're going to... Ready? Find it! Go on! Go on! Go and find it! Loring continues to play a crucial role in our nation's defense by providing protection for at-risk species in their struggle to survive. They are kind of a canary in the coal mine type thing where, you know, if they've got a good habitat, they want cold, clear, clean waters to, uh, to use for their habitat for hibernation. And uh, they, they saw today they kind of feed in vernal pools and go into the forest to pour it during the, most of the summer. The discovery of these wood turtles gives biologists hope that there are even more in the area. Yeah, I'm excited to see what we have here because this is like my first wood turtle site ever. So like, I hope we find the one Stubby Stella we nicknamed her. It was our first ever wood turtle. <laughs> they will continue to conduct surveys here to gather data on the turtles and the impacts of climate change on their habitat. Three surveys in the spring and three in the fall is what we consider a long-term survey. So that gives us enough data to make an estimate of the population in that site. Helping them understand how land that was once used for war 
is evolving back into a place where even the most vulnerable species can live in peace. She'll probably just slide into the water. Yeah. Just... June, leave it. All done. She's like, but you're not telling me to go find more? Come on, June, with me. Good. Come on. Let's go find more. Come on. Leave it. Good. Come on. Let's go find more. Good dog. Good girl. In the Aroostook National Wildlife Refuge, I'm Tim Goff for Borealis. Good girl. Come here.